the Forty or Tea podcast. There's there's so many like stigmas from mental health and from autism. You have that like that Andrew Tate guy going around saying that depression doesn't isn't real and that and other conspiracy theorists saying that medication is a way to keep you depressed so that you can you know, <laughs> you have all this this stuff online and all of these people giving their thoughts on something that they've never experienced just spying absolute nonsense and it can be really hard to live in a world that kind of pretty much negates or, or tries to dismiss your experiences of life as something that's a personality trait something that exactly. you know you're an anxious person you're a negative person and because you're an anxious and negative person you have anxiety and depression it's not like that not uh, the most po- <laughs> The most positive, the most like loving, empathic, and strong people I know, they've been through mental health conditions, really severe ones or really hard life experiences and develop those conditions from it. Like it's not something that's that that's a personality trait. Anyone can be can become depressed. It just, you know, for some people, it's a lot more common. There is a very heavy, heavy tendency for guys to adopt this kind of very strong mindset of i'm not emotional i am strong i can deal with everything mental health doesn't exist i'm just being weak i think that that mindset for a lot of men is quite prevalent and i'd really like to challenge that i think because i don't think being open and vulnerable is a is a is a level of weakness but i do think experiencing negative things about life and trying to find ways to phrase it or hide it is a sign of weakness. I think that that mindset really needs to change a lot because just being open and just being or acknowledging certain feelings, certain experiences, you know, that is a strength in its own and it requires a lot of strength of moral character and, you know, strength in, you know, to, to share that stuff. I don't think that it's it's a negative thing. Um, sure, there'll be toxic people around you, perhaps, you know, and there have been in, in my life who sort of ridicule you and, and you know, say that you're you're feminine or you're too emotionally open and they sort of make fun of you. I've had a few guys like that in my life. Um, but, you know, the majority of them, I think, a lot of them, a lot of men, they they do want to talk about this stuff, but it's, you know, it's because of the the current social climate i think it's becoming a lot harder and um male suicide is is a real big issue even outside of the autistic community and i wish that's something that could be changed but i think that requires a lot of work a lot of shifting the narrative and the frameworks that we have i agree with you um a thousand percent it's one of the things that i'm actually very passionate about as well um, because I understand that men are more likely to end their life by suicide, which is really, really sad. Um, it's the it's, leading cause of male death in young to mid age. The leading cause. <laughs> so horrible, and it's like it's that toxic masculinity sort of thing, isn't it? Um, where, like, like you said, I I think it's strength. Like, I think it's such strength to show that. Um, mm. you have emotions and you're feeling them and if you don't feel good you're going to talk about it or you're going to do whatever you can that's a healthy way to feel better but like you said I don't think it's good to bottle it all up or do other things to compensate for like feeling bad emotions because if you think about it feeling not so good emotions isn't a bad thing because if you weren't able to feel them then you wouldn't feel the good ones would you so mm. It well, you'd be a out. psychopath. Like men, men are <laughs> yeah. not supposed to be psychopaths. That's not what we're trying to exactly. we're reach for. <laughs> you're meant to be emotionless. Feeling emotion, feeling emotion is not a feminine thing. It's a human thing. Everyone yes. feels emotions. Exactly. You know, even the most masculine men, they feel very strong emotions towards their kids and their their family, and like, you know, it's it's not something that's a, you know, has to be characterized as a weak thing just because you're acknowledging that you have emotions it's and when people think about this they always think about 
all right, oh, you think about all those men who get upset and start crying and 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 going on about their experiences. Well, you, you, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. It could be as simple as just telling someone that you're not doing great or telling someone about your experience with something like 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 we have been doing, you know? It's doesn't necessarily have to be this over the top emotional experience. It could just be acknowledging things and talking and trying to process how you're feeling. I think there's a really big roadblock there, but I'd, I'd really highlight that as something else. There is also another aspect of that. And just from, from my personal experience and talking to other men, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that is caused by other men. I think in my life, a lot of people have. Even a lot of women have assumed that I'm okay, I'm okay because I'm, you know, six three, and and strong, and you know I, I do all of this stuff, and so there's no possibility that I would need any any support or emotional um, supportive issues that I have, and you know that that that's been sort of a constant for me. I think, to be honest, that uh, from my experiences, you know, I've had more you know, validating comments and validating responses from, from other men um, in my time. I don't know whether that's just because of my physicality or the way that I am, but it's definitely an experience that I've had um, a lot in my life. And I've always tried to support people and try to help them through their own emotions and experiences. But a lot of the time when I sort of turn the turn the spotlight to myself and you know, ask for support or tell people about my experiences. It's often, it's often very much kind of pushed aside when I've done that. I don't know what that what that says, but I thought it was just worth mentioning because I, I I do think that it's not necessarily something that's always pushed by men. I think it's a general sort of societal thing, and when you see someone like myself, who's as I said you know, quite externally, quite masculine. I think a lot of people can make assumptions that, you know, I'll, I'll be a certain way or that I can't feel emotions, which is, um, has been, you know, very unfortunate for me in a number of circumstances.